time for business with Emmanuel Hawajiafi. Good evening to you, Emmanuel. Good evening, Izzy. All right. How are you doing? Yeah. I'm well, thank All you. Right. Okay. All right. You give us a business. Here. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining me on business. Head of Economics Department at the University of Ghana Business School, Professor Godfred Bokwing, says that spontaneous negative reactions to stocks trading on global markets is a sign that investors were not expecting a Donald Trump presidency. U.S. stock futures, for instance, dived 5% at one point, while the Mexican currency also plummeted with the election of Donald Trump as U.S. president. Sharing his thoughts on the marketplace, Professor Buckwing said investors in a panic reaction reallocated their portfolios into other safe haven commodities like gold. However, the spillover effect... Now, after an increase in the last two consecutive months of August and September, inflation has now recorded a decline of 1.4 percentage points. The rate for the month of October reduced to 15.8% down from the 17.2% in September. Deputy Government Statistician Dr. Banwadi announced the inflation rate at a press conference in Accra. He noted that food and non-alcoholic beverages group were identified as the key drivers for October inflation. The year-on-year -year inflation rate for October 2016 was 15.8%. This means that the change in the general price level was 15.8% over the one-year period October 2015 to October 2016. The year-on-year -year inflation rate for September 2016 was 17.2%. The monthly change rate for October 2016 was 1.4%. This means that the general price level went up by 1.4% between September 2016 and October 2016. The monthly change rate for September 2016 was 0.2%. This means even though the general price levels of goods and services remain high, the rate of increase in the month of October was lower than in September. He explains the factors that accounted for the decline. Realize that for both non-food and food, there were reductions in the the rate of inflation, the overall rate of inflation, but it was more for the non-food. The reduction was higher for the non-food than the food. Now for the non-food, we realized that there were reductions in such items as education and culture, education, housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels. Then also household furnishings and equipment also fell. And these basically accounted for the reduction in the non-food inflation. On regional basis, Central Region recorded the lowest inflation rate of 12.9%, whilst Greater Accra and Ashanti Regions continued to record the highest inflation rate, both above the national average of 15.8% in the month of October. The Petroleum Commission has instituted adequate measures to further enhance local content and participation in the oil and gas industry. That's the assurance given by the Chief Executive of the Commission, Theophilus Ahuri, at the opening of the two-day stakeholder summit on local content and participation in the sector, which opened in Takwadi today. In an interview with Joy Business, Managing Director of HFC Bank, supporting partner of the event, Robert Lehant, emphasized the importance of the local content law in promoting national development. He said HFC Bank is poised towards financing projects in oil and gas. Yeah, we are actually the only platinum sponsor. Um, and yes, we are being, we, this is not the first seminar that we have been partnering with the local content um, commission. Um, we believe that the oil industry has a tremendous role to play um, in the economic development of, of Ghana. Um, and we also believe that, you know, local content laws are only rarely good as what is written on paper without proper financing structures in place. And therefore, we are trying to do our part as a bank. We understand that there are a number of issues surrounding individuals getting financing. And we have stepped up to the plate as a bank to play our role in really bringing local content laws um, to life. And support for SMEs financially 
um, is crucial to ensure that you know the local content agenda is achieved. What, what are you putting on the table? What are you offering? Well, you know, first, I mean, Republic HFC, as you as you are aware, is now part is now a subsidiary of Republic Bank Financial Limited out of Trinidad, and Republic Bank has had a long history. Or Trinidad and Tobago has had a long in history in the financing or in the oil sector. The Savannah Accelerated Development Authority, SADA, has signed a memorandum of understanding with Italian Petroleum Exploration and Production Company, ENI, to develop a solar plant within the Savannah Ecological Zone of Ghana. Managing Director of ENI Ghana, Fabio Cavana, signed agreement on behalf of the ENI Group, whilst Chief Executive Officer of SADA, Charles Abogri, initialed for SADA. There's more in this report. The agreement is part of ENI's long-term strategy aimed at integrating its traditional business with renewable energy sources. Experts believe the Savannah Ecological Zone, which covers about 54% of total land mass in Ghana, possesses a potential for large sources for renewable energy. Speaking at the signing ceremony, Managing Director of ENI Ghana, Fabio Cavana, noted that the agreement will assess the technical and economic feasibility of the solar plant. The project, when completed, will generate about 20 to 50 megawatts of power into the national grid. ENI is also involved uh, in renewables, and uh, because we believe this is the future, and uh, that's why Ghana has been selected to be one of the countries where ENI uh, wants to get engaged for renewable projects. And that's why we're here with our friends of Sana, SADA for signing this uh, MOU, which is targeting uh, to finalize a study for identify a place in, uh, in the north of Ghana, probably, where to build a photovoltaic plant capacity of which be between 20 and 50 megawatts. Agreed. On his part, Chief Executive Officer of SADA, Charles Abugri, assured the full support of the authority to ensure the project becomes a success. He was hopeful the MOU will lead to further exploration and development of other renewable sources of power across the country. We, on our side, SADA will provide all the support necessary to ENI for the technical studies the location of the appropriate areas, solving the land problems, helping also and supporting them with some of the complicated uh, regulatory arrangements that need to, to be done for the plant to actually be on the ground and operating. Um, that commitment is part of what we are signing today. So. We look forward also to when this has been successful, the potential for other renewable energy sources in, in the country generally, and in the SADA zone in particular. SADA is expected to provide about 200 acres of land for this project in the zone. And that's it for business. Thank you very much for watching. More stories coming up. Don't go away. My name is Imano.